Welcome back. It's been some time since we've done one of these Ask the Doctors, but I think we need to do this because there have been so many questions when it comes to COVID-19, when it comes to the fourth wave, back to school on the way, vaccine policies kind of in the gray. So let's do exactly that. Dr. Susie Hoda is an infectious disease specialist with the University Health Network, and she joins us now. Good morning to you, doctor. Good morning. All right, we got a lot of feedback, Sid. Go ahead, Mel. Lead us off. First one? Okay. Uh, doctor, for you, this is coming to us from John. John says, can you please clarify that being fully vaccinated doesn't mean that you can't contract and spread? And we get a lot of these comments, right? Because we do know if you are fully vaccinated, you can, you can, this can still happen. But what is, I guess, the percentage? Or what are we looking at when it comes to a fully vaccinated person versus partially versus not at all? Yes, so uh, this is an excellent question because being fully vaccinated really protects you extremely well against hospitalizations and against death. And, you know, that's 90 plus percent with most of the vaccines that we have authorized in North America. Um, however, when it comes to whether you can contract the infection or spread it on to others, there is still a possibility of that. Now, it's still actually low. You know, you're, you know, depending on the studies that you look at and the real life experiences that have been summarized across the world, um, you know, you can be protected in probably 70 to 90 percent of cases uh, against infection, but it's not zero. And as you have more COVID circulating around in your community, there is always a chance that an infection can occur in a fully vaccinated person and that person can spread it on. So that's one of the reasons why we're in this weird in-between place where we're still asking for masking indoors and, you know, we're trying to be cautious and reopening and, and doing things too quickly because we want to make sure that we've got a good grasp on what the situation is. All right, we have Olivia from, sorry, Robert G, where's she from? Lydia from Grafton. I, I was wrong on every front there. <laughs> Lydia, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. All right, what's your question for the doctor? Okay, there is this nasal spray. It's called nitrous oxide. It kills COVID dead 99.9%. It's manufactured in British Columbia. Right now they're selling it in Israel over the counter at approximately $40. Wouldn't this be a wonderful thing? It kills it. Well, let's go to the doctor in terms of what it actually does. Right. Doctor, go ahead. You can comment. Right. So I haven't seen any data to actually suggest that something like a nitrous oxide spray can prevent infections from occurring and spreads from spreading from occurring. Um, there are lots of things that are being looked at, and hopefully one day we'll have some therapeutics and some other things aside from the vaccines that we have, some other tools in our toolkit um, to try and combat this. But at the moment, unfortunately, nothing's really been proven and uh, anything that's out there that you know could be a nasal spray is still considered experimental so, okay, um, so why are they why are they selling it in israel right now I don't it's think that's something question, that I, I don't think I don't think that's I'll save you here, doctor. Let thank Lydia, thank you for the call. Not something the doctor can really comment on right now, as she said, but we appreciate the call. Let's get to another yeah. tweet here from Adam. Uh, Adam writes, if I've already had COVID and had no symptoms, why do I need a vaccine if I've already created antibodies and clearly the virus doesn't affect me? This is an interesting one, doc. What do you think? Right. So if you've had a natural infection, yes, you may have uh, mounted a good immune response. But what we don't know is how long that's going to last. And, you know, looking at some other infections, you, we've seen that the vaccine can actually give you protection that lasts longer than a natural infection. So there, given that we're in a pandemic, we really want to, you know, stop having to, you know, go in and out of these different public health restrictions and make sure that everyone's well protected against this infection. We are currently advising that if you've had the infection, you should get a vaccine as well, and you should get both doses of the vaccine. That may change over time, but at the moment, that's what we're recommending. Dr. Hoda, a tweet from Howard saying, how do people with autoimmune or severe allergies who cannot be vaccinated socialize with fully vaxxed people who wish to be maskless? So, uh, it, it's an interesting one, and you, you sort of alluded to it with some of the policies here, but how, how can they do it? If they wa want the vaccine, cannot get the vaccine, but they still want to be able to do the things. Yeah, it's, it's a very difficult thing. It's one of the reasons why we want to aim for really high vaccine coverage rates in sort of the broader population to protect those around you who actually can't get vaccinated. You know, young children, for example, who it's just not authorized for yet, and we just have to wait for that to come out. Um, you know, in terms of autoimmune illnesses, most of those are not a reason um, to not get the vaccine. Actually talking to your doctor, making sure that you're comfortable with the pros and cons and the, the risks and the benefit um, 
sort of judgment, most physicians would actually say you should go ahead and get it. And it's really only if you have a severe anaphylactic type um, reaction or allergy to a vaccine component that is in that vaccine that you shouldn't get it. So I think some of it is people getting comfortable with um, going forward and getting vaccinated so that they are able to feel like they can do these things with, you know, everybody else in the public. Uh, and the rest of it is um, hoping that everyone else around you can get vaccinated so that you can eventually have those interactions without feeling, you know, afraid. Um, so it, there's not an easy solution right now as we're still, you know, 82% of people uh, having had first dose, 74% in Ontario having second doses because uh, there's still quite a few people who have not uh, been vaccinated yet. Okay, a lot of great questions here. Thank you so much for addressing all of them, Dr. Hoda. And you have been very gracious to say you're going to stick around. Um, so you're going to stay here uh, on the other side of the break and we're going to break down the province's announcements, the vaccine policies. So thank you for your time here and thank you in advance for your time on the other side. Appreciate it. Also coming up at 720 here on BT, are you still nervous to go back to the gym? Well, there's a new facility in Toronto that promotes physical distancing and you don't have to share equipment with anybody. Details straight ahead. Good Wednesday morning. You're watching BT.